UAE Exchange has grown to be one of the leading global remittances, foreign exchange and payment solution brands in the world. For their continued success, they've been awarded FX and Payment Solutions Firm of the Year in the UAE for 2016. Well, their CEO, Mr. Promath Mangat, joins us today to discuss their achievements. A very good day to you. Hi, thank you. The company was founded in 1980, so can you tell us about those early beginnings and more importantly, the services that you provide for your customers? Uh, you exchange started in 1980 when the whole Gulf was in the pace of putting up the infrastructure were the new things coming up specifically after the oil uh, getting explored and country was formed UAE in 1971. So, you exchange got started to uh, address the burgoing needs of the expatriate workforce who have to remit money back home. And back then, you know, uh, banks were not in the right position to handle this service. So, that's where the founders of you exchange started this uh, service where people can send their money at their wish. One of the very small single promise of making the service available at any point of time where the exchange was open seven days a week exchange was open long working hours with a small single promise and that service uh, mentality to make sure that making it available with the new products and services grew over a period of time beyond UAE to Gulf countries at large beyond Gulf to the global at large so that has been the value which we hold since then even now to make sure that how can you make services available to more and more customers across the globe who are expatriates who want to remit money back home. Mm. And it's a very challenging field in which you operate because uh, you've got the fintech startups that have moved into this territory and also customers are switching to digital means of moving their money around. So how prepared are you in terms of facing these hurdles and taking on those challenges? Uh, UXchange is in 36 years uh, in this industry and I am within this for the last 16 years. So I've seen technology has always been part and parcel of this industry. We can't, at times, we get confused, are we a technology company or a money transfer company? But with the new fintech or the digital that we hear about, what has happened is that the adoption or the pace of adopting technology into this has been accelerated. So we have been always in the forefront, you know, so we are a channel agnostic uh, player in terms of offering it. We source transactions from stores, we source transactions through online, through mobile apps, through kiosks, we distribute it uh, across in different ways. So it's not that we, we take a stand that we only offer services through the stores. The digital for us, the digital for us is a newer way of doing things. It could be the way we source the transaction, it could be the way we process it, it the way it could be we distribute the payments. So we are in the forefront, we work with uh, digital players a lot, we joint venture with them, we have acquired capabilities in terms of the digital and we have got large technology team which is you know on a tech uh, uh, you know phase technology team of 400 people who really work day in day out in bringing our new products and services so we take it as a fair challenge and but we we see that how can we work with these players in terms of capability and same time incrementally what we can do more to the customer so it's a, it's a fantastic time to be in where we are able to innovate new things. A changing field and one that doesn't intimidate you, you're not daunted by the challenge, it sounds as if you relish it. Yeah, that has been the thing. If, if I want to bring an example, till 1995, whenever we do a transaction, it takes seven working days to put across the payment to the beneficiary. Now we are in a situation where I'm able to place money to a bank account of a beneficiary real time online, 24 by seven. It is irrespective whether the beneficiary location is bank working, beneficiary location is up and running. So technology has democratized this, technology has reduced the cost, technology has helped us to take services to many more people. So we embrace technology with, uh, you know, with open, uh, open hand and we have adopted that because it has helped us to grow the business. It has helped us to take services to many more new customers, to new markets and regulatory it becomes much more easy because we are able to track and trace things and work in a very legitimate way. So we see a lot of opportunities and it's an opportunity for us to offer more services beyond remittances like microcredit, 
uh, bill pays or any kind of payment services the customers would like to avail from us. You mentioned there the word regulatory, which moves quite neatly into another area that I'd like to explore with you because you operate the business in multiple markets and that does mean complex regulation. So how do you navigate that and how do you see the market evolving? Because these regulations will change as that demand grows. Yeah, as a, as a group, UA Exchange currently operates in 29 markets. Along with Travelex coming in, we are in 43 markets. And with Express Money, which is our uh, franchised brand, we cover almost 150 markets. So this business has to be run, uh, I don't know whether international or global, I should say, it has to be run on a very global scale. And in the post 9-11, in the last one and a half decades, the regulatory thing on financial transaction, especially on cross-border payments, has been come under very high surveillance. And what we have seen as a global player is that it has been a unique competitive advantage. Because when you're regulated, because we are here for a long term, we are here for long term, for a long run. So it's always better to be falling under a regulatory regime that you are creating a level playing field and you do things in a very legitimate way. Yes, it poses you challenges in terms of ways of working, but that's an opportunity where you can bring it up and to do that. And we have seen that our growth, our organic and inorganic growth happened in the last eight or nine years where the regulatory regime was at the peak. So I don't think that, you know, it's that it can be an impediment. Yes, you need to have got active engagement. You have a large compliance and regulatory team which was absent one and a half decades back, which is a new trend of the business. It's all about how you go out looking at to do that because end of the day, any institutions like us don't want our system knowingly or unknowingly, directly or indirectly being tainted off. Mm. Okay. And in terms of your customer-centric approach, it seems to be driven by three key principles, people, product and process. The business is rolled out around the world, so how do you ensure that you maintain that standard so that you keep your customers with you? So when you look at our brand UA Exchange, you see a very punchy uh, tagline called services of a currency, and we really stand for that, and that's where customer centricity has always been the core. Because you know we are a retail brand, and you know we, we, make, we, make, we, we make our flows with millions of customers coming and endorsing services of us. And customer centricity is a very key factor because we look at the business, we look at the value that we create for the business, we look at the service that we create business for millions of customers who comes and serve with us. And for us, that is why we want to bring into three buckets of people, products and services. So customer centricity is not alone for the frontliners who come in touch with the customer. It starts from the CEO, it starts the leadership team, it's even go to the back end, somebody who is processing a transaction somebody in legal, somebody in finance, somebody in compliance, including the frontliners. Because whatever we do, what we make sure is that any improvisation or any new change, be it policy, be it processes, if it is not adding value for the customer, it's a waste for us. And that is the kind of principle that we drive internally. So for every decision that we make, we spend one extra minute, every one of us, to make sure that what does it mean for the customer? We put that empathetic feeling that whatever we do, is it helping the customer or not? And it has helped us because in a culture, you cannot, you cannot create a culture, you cannot discover the culture by practicing it again and again. And what I've seen is that when you grow across the globe, when you have a value, you demonstrate the value in a different way, but keeping the value across the globe has been the same. I don't see any difference when you're operating in the Middle East, or in Africa, or in Asia, or in Pacific, or in Europe, or in Americas, the value everyone has is same. The way you demonstrate only, it differs. Mm. And of course, the culmination of this is the award that I referred to in my introduction, FX and Payment Solutions Firm of the Year. So for a company of your size, your heft, what does that mean to you? I think always, you know, recognition uh, is always an inspiration. You know, like, you know, you, you feel that, okay, you get a pat on your back. But at the same time, must be humility have enough to make sure that you make must responsible for that. You have to carry on this baton and make sure that you continue to deliver that. And you know, it's it's of course an inspiration for us. You know, we feel motivated that we can do many more things. And also a reminder call that you know people see value when you do right things consistently. And it's a good message for us that we are here for a long term 
and these recognitions are very important and make us responsible to take it forward. So 2016 has been a very good year. Let's project into the future. You strike me as a person who never settles down. You want to continually raise your game. What are your aspirations for 2017? And where would you like the company to be in the future, in let's say the next 10 years? But let's start with 2017 first. I think being an entrepreneurial organization, you know, uh, the, the, the tonic which get really inspires us is growth. And you know, like we always look for opportunities for growth. And every time it's not that you will have all bets of roses. You will have challenging times. But the opportunity is that how can you convert those challenging situations into a real opportunities for growth. And as an institution, we have got very enterprising set of people across the globe where we have put into place that, and that makes the whole difference, you know, if we do that. Yeah, like if you look at across the globe, that it's not that every region is in the great economical shape. There are some regions which is not in a great economical shape, but there are some markets which is in great economical shape. So being a global company, you have that advantage to play that. In some markets, you have some markets you don't. But again, those markets which economically not in great shape, you would have to recraft. You have to find newer ways of doing things out of the box. So 2017, you know, from 15 onwards, we've been driving agenda on digitalization. That continues to be our growth agenda for it. You know, we have bring in a lot of services, automate a lot of processes, which continues to be the agenda for 2017. We will expand to new markets. 16, we entered some of the new markets in Asia, like Singapore. Thailand, which was not there earlier for us. So those markets will continue to have a growth. And some of the big markets like US, China and India will be our continuous growth story going forward as well. So good times ahead. We're hoping for the best. <laughs> Excellent. Pramath Mangat, thank you so much and good luck with your ventures. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pramath Mangat, on behalf of the European, I congratulate you on your success. Thank you so much, Dylan. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you.